to get started, uh, kind of a, just a housekeeping note, if, um, if unless you're right on top of, of Cisco and recent announcements, you may not be aware of this. And also, I mean, Tom and I work with Cisco security all day, every day, and we're even finding out updates as we go. So uh, there has been uh, some major name changing and branding to the Cisco security solution. So if you've heard of Firepower Management Center, FMC, it is now Cisco Secure Firewall Management Center. Firepower Threat Defense is now Cisco Secure Firewall Threat Defense. Um, the ASAs we're now calling Cisco Secure Firewall ASA. And for the Firepower Threat Defense uh, Virtual, it's Cisco Secure Firewall Threat Events Virtual or TDV. And when we share this deck with you, you'll notice uh, up in this left hand corner, further Cisco security brand details. That's the PDF that Cisco uh, frequently updates. So if you want to just save that link, click on that just in case um, you want to get an update on the naming convention. So just want to mention that real quick and uh, we'll move on to uh, more pertinent content. So uh, as an introduction, uh, the firewalls that we're going to be uh, speaking about today, the typical uh, use cases for these and what they'll fall into um, is going to be the Internet Edge architecture, data center, branch office, uh, cloud and virtual environments, secure next generation, IPS, and remote access uh, VPN. Very common thing, especially now with remote working, uh, really ramping up. Now, Cisco uh, does a survey once a year, and this goes out to about 3,000 um, CISOs and IT security leaders to major companies uh, all over the world to get a better understanding of what their needs are as, as a whole and as a collective. So uh, this past year, by far what was most pertinent in uh, coming back from feedback in the survey was the need to improve encrypted <clears throat> traffic performance and detect more sophisticated threats with a complete line of firewall solutions. So this is where Cisco's already been focusing and where they've continued and will continue to really focus. So in stopping more threats, uh, the idea is to contain known and unknown malware, and that's going to be done with what used to be known as Cisco Malware Protection or AMP, uh, and also the sandboxing capabilities, which is now known as Secure Malware Analytics. This is actually a feature set uh, license option um, you can order with the firewalls. Prioritizing uh, threats so that you can even uh, automate the impact flags that are built into the system with risk rankings, uh, allowing you to automate uh, the highest level of alerts so you can quickly identify which of these should take priority. And also the need to detect earlier so you can act faster. And we'll talk about this more a bit later on. This is where Cisco's backend threat research team comes in, and that's TALUS. Uh, so their threat intelligence uh, is behind the entire Cisco security solution uh, portfolio. And if you are already using any Cisco secure product, you are actually already uh, utilizing these features of Talos. And just to give you an idea here of uh, the different platforms, we're not going to go deep dive into speeds of feeds or anything like that. Your eyes would glaze over, as would mine. So just to quickly mention this. Um, they, they do actually have virtual firewall appliances available that can be deployed in private and leading uh, public clouds, including AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and, and Oracle. For the physical appliances, there is the ISA uh, 3000. This is designed for use in industrial environments, so in those cases where you're dealing with extreme temperatures as well as uh, the need to power with DC power. Um, for the Firepower 1000 series, this is really designed and ideal for SMB and branch offices. Uh, the 2100 series for larger branches and up to uh, entry-level enterprise environments. Uh, for the 41, this is for large campuses and data center. And 9300 series is primarily focused on service providers and really high performance uh, data centers. And if you happen to fall into that higher echelon, just one thing to note is that the 4100, 9300 uh, do support clustering should you need to add um, increased performance, integrated protection against DDoS attacks, uh, dedicated IPS, those types of things. But for most of us, uh, we are going to live in the area of the 1000 and into the 2100 series. So just to mention that, uh, you know, there's quite a 
quite a wide variety available and can fit any need. So just to give an idea of, of what uh, Citizen Secure Firewall and Threat Defense, where, where it fits into so well, um, we say that it, it delivers nearly 100% uh, efficiency or, or effectiveness in blocking malicious flows and against network threats. And depending on the year and the specific test, um, Cisco typically falls in the range of blocking 98.7 and up to 99.6 of threats. So that is all, uh, you know, Cisco Talus and, and the policy management, that type of things to make it that efficient. So the key benefits uh, we, we are typically talking about here is uh, tenant management separation, the ability to scale as you grow. Um, and what we'll show a bit more is impact analysis and also impact flags and the ability to prioritize administration. And key features, uh, obviously you're gonna have your basic uh, firewall capabilities, ACLs in layer three, four, et cetera, and all the way up through seven. Also the ability to do next generation intrusion prevention, uh, built-in TLS decryption. Of course, this can act as a VPN concentrator and also uh, Cisco Threat Intelligence Director. Uh, this, is, this is to help you aggregate intelligence data and configure defensive actions and analyze threats in the environment. And this is intended actually to supplement uh, other firepower functionality. And of course, as mentioned, um, malware continuous analysis with retrospection. Um, do we have any questions uh, so far? And I'm going to flip the presentation the over to Tom. Okay, you can, can you take the ball, Tom, or do you need me to hand it to you? I've got the ball. All right. So let me uh, get the next slide up here. Um, when you want questions right now, Kevin, you want to just put it in the chat? Yes, putting questions in the chat would be perfect. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, you should see the same screen Kevin had a moment ago. Yes. Okay, good. So let's jump to it then in a second. I'll be ready. Okay, so a little bit deeper on some of the things Kevin just covered. Uh, about, uh, first, what I'm going to do is talk about some of the features, then we'll do a demonstration of some of the firewall management, and then I'll hand it back to Kevin to finish up. But, uh, you know, one of the things we have here uh, is you could set up different policies on uh, different firepower uh, appliances. Now, I'm using the word firepower, that's the old name, but I'm going to secure firewall here. So I could actually secure on a whole lot of criteria uh, with these next generation firewalls. So. I could block, warn, allow on different traffic, but traditional things firewalls do, like an IP addresses, a source of destination ports, of course, but also we could do it based on URLs uh, that we want people to go to or not go to. Uh, also, FQDN or domain name uh, can do the same type of thing. And based on application. So application is actually using and an older term or a term they used for a while with that is ABC, Application Visibility Control. Uh, but this has been upgraded, uh, hold on, I'm going to upgrade Open App ID. And Open App ID has over 4,000 predefined applications. So then we can uh, do policy based on those applications, block them or allow them based on who the user is or where they're coming from. Uh, but you could also, if you have your own applications, you could uh, go to the Open App ID site and make your own and add them to the firewall too for custom applications if we want to add them to a model or block. So we have uh, across multiple types of uh, ways of controlling that traffic. Um, of course, these firewalls have secure IPS. Uh, some of the best in the business, uh, you know, operating with Snort is the main IPS engine. You know, it's kind of a funny name, but uh, uh, Snort 3 is the current version. Uh, and then it integrates into the rest of the firewall system. And Kevin had mentioned those impact flags. So those exist in some of the management interfaces. Depending on your deployment, you 
uh, may get the this feature or not. Uh, this uh, actually go and integrates into the management side of these impact flags. Uh, but we do have different cloud management and local management, depending on how you want to actually deploy it. Uh, and then the IPS can also integrate in with internal recommendations. So this actually can tune to your environment and adjust the intrusion prevention, either manually or taking recommendations from the system. So all this is to help make the system provide more efficient intrusion prevention. Uh, so that if you have a room full of Windows machines, you might not need to have the Mac OS uh, protection as an example. Uh, those uh, protections maybe could be turned off. Um, we did get an update last year uh, to SNORT 3 from SNORT 2. I'm not going to dive into all the differences. But every number of years, it takes a good amount of years, Cisco does update uh, things like this. SNORT 3 actually is a big update in the efficiency of SNORT that actually made it a fully multi-threaded and multi-process solution so it can scale much higher performance and be lower overhead and a variety of other features on here. But I'm not going to dive into all these little features other than it is the latest version now shipping. Uh, another feature, uh, and this is specific if you're doing the management center on-premise, um, is host profiles, where the firewall system on the management center can learn what hosts you have on your network um, so that it can classify them and check them for vulnerabilities they might have. It can tell what operating system they are, things like that. Um, and then allow the system to apply that information to the host. You know, it knows that it's a Windows machine of a particular version, and that can help with those firepower recommendations and help build the impact flag when you're using that. Um, and also, when troubleshooting, uh, you know, you see like what's this traffic happening or someone's having a problem, you can zoom in and see which machines were affected and the knows about those machines and details and attributes of those computers. So it's all designed to work together. It also, in, in addition to impact flags, there's also indications of compromise. Uh, so their endpoint protection product also has this concept of indications of compromise. And in this case, the system, the firewall product here, it's gathering intrusion information, security intelligence, which is additional feeds it gets from Cisco Talos. Uh, and malware, like I said, if you have a license with their Advanced network protection gathers all these together to develop the indications of compromise uh, and then rate them uh, based on industry standards. So, this can be very useful to see how severe a particular incident is, either malware or exploit kits, those type of things. Um, so, this is part of the solution. So, um, now Kevin had mentioned it kind of on that intro slide. But integrated TLS de uh, decryption uh, is a major feature. Not every firewall offers this. The hardware they have these days accelerates it quite heavily. So this is where I want to do a man in the middle decryption of the end user traffic so I can properly scan it because a very high percentage of the internet now is actually encrypted. Um, you know, so this allows us actually to decrypt the end user, uh, uh, the end user traffic. Now, hopefully, uh, I just saw the chat. Uh, did my audio get any better, or are you still having issues with it? Sorry if that was a while ago. But hopefully, the audio is okay. You're coming through. Your your audio is coming through just fine for me, Tom. Okay, yeah, it's possible if, some, if you, on your end, if you have your Speaker turned down a little that if I'm a little lower that I might not come through as loud. So make sure you turn your speakers up. Um, all right, back to the TLS here. Um, this allows us to actually then scan where the users are going, the websites they're going to, even if they're secure sites, and any content that they're downloading scan with uh, the NMLware and the intrusion prevention. 
Uh, when people are on secure sites, it does make it a little bit harder to scan that traffic. Uh, but this alleviates this. Now, this does take more load on the firewall. So it's something you design when you're buying it if you want to use this feature, because this is uh, one of the steepest costs on CPU and RAM on a firewall is TLS decryption. But it is a major feature uh, to help secure environments. All right, let's continue on here. Now, I did mention different managements. Cisco has different management for different customers. Uh, there's over on the right is device manager, which they used to call firepower device manager. Now it's just device manager. And this is local on the box of each Cisco firewall running threat defense, which is the current operating system. So this is a straight HTML5, very easy to use uh, management. Uh, so depending on who's going to be managing your environment, uh, this comes with it. Uh, you know, has basic features, but not limited. It, it uh, doesn't have as many features as if you're using the management center, but you can still do full policies, full intrusion prevention, require, you know, some basic reporting right on box, very easy to use, no additional cost. The disadvantage is each one has to be managed independently. You know, so you web browse to the IP address of the firewall and you manage it. So in addition to that, and can coexist with it is Cisco Defense Orchestrator. Uh, this actually is a cloud managed uh, manager uh, that works with the defense manager. So this allows me to do centralized policies, uh, remote updating of the boxes, and a lot of centralization, cloud-based. And then it synchronizes with the local firewall. Uh, so you could actually go back to device manager if you want to, and then it's got to sync the other way. Usually when you're using cloud defense orchestrator, you do most of your management there, unless there's something that has to be done locally for some reason. Uh, so this is one way to go, uh, gives you, there's additional reporting available with the defense orchestrator as an add-on. And I'll talk about that in a few moments. The other way is a, a SecOps focused uh, version. Uh, and this is Management Center, formerly Firepower Management Center. So this is an on premise machine you run, either a physical box or in a virtual machine. And you have it running there and you web browse to this box and it manages one or more firewalls. And then this will have more local reporting and storage of events. Uh, but this is focused more on security teams or dedicated security teams, where uh, the other two are more focused on network operations. But they do have some overlap. Uh, the idea is a uh, defense orchestrator is great if you have a lot of locations that you want to manage and you want cloud managed. Um, yeah, so we do have some different options there. All right, now. You also have uh, different hardware that could work with Defense Orchestrator. So Defense Orchestrator it can manage all the different types of hardware you see on the left. So some of these are the ones Kevin mentioned. You know, you got ASA hardware. You also have software. So the ASA software still exists. That's not threat defense. Um, that's uh, their older software. They continue to update it though. They're traditional stuff. Uh, so Defense Orchestrator can manage either of them, uh, including uh, if someone has Meraki, it can also manage uh, a Meraki environment. Typically, you don't need to do that if you're using other uh, firepower hardware and you also have Meraki. If you just have Meraki, you wouldn't really get Defense Orchestrator. Um, now, we have this slide kind of as reference. Um, you could look at uh, different uh, use cases and then try to choose which manager would be the best. But there is no uh, one way to go. Uh, you really could do any of them in any category. These are just recommendations in the middle. So for a typical Internet Edge, uh, you know, Management Center or CDO, uh, where SMB, they're suggesting Device Manager or CDO. Just depends on what you consider Internet Edge or SMB uh, size. Uh, networks. Uh, but this could be used as reference to uh, take a look at that. 
All right. The next thing is another an add-on actually to CDO is security analytics and logging. Uh, this plugs into CDO, which I'm going to demonstrate in a few moments, actually, and it adds the ability to do centralized logging. So say I have multiple locations, you know, firewall of every location, or even redundant firewalls. I could centralize all the event logs into CDO when, with that add-on license of security analytics and logging. Uh, and that, uh, so that's one use case for it. Uh, it also can collect data from network logs. So I could have switches for uh, do NetFlow and forward data he to here, and ASA firewalls and routers forward data he to here too. That's a uh, higher end license to do that. Uh, there is also uh, doing advanced analytics with Stealthwatch Cloud or uh, Network uh, Cloud Analytics, they now call it, can also be an add on license to this too. Uh, and these are those three license levels. Uh, so this is a, an add-on to Cisco Defense Orchestrator, which is that optional cloud management. And the, these are the three different levels actually. So uh, centrally collecting the firewall logs, uh, logging analytics is using uh, secure cloud analytics for the Stealthwatch Cloud to do predictive analysis and observations and send you alerts in it. Really good product. I really uh, like using that product. Uh, or and then total network analytics includes the other two and allows you to connect um, other network devices like switches and routers and other firewalls and send NetFlow information. So you can have that central repository in the cloud. All right. Uh, let's talk about migration. So uh, they have a very easy to use migration path. If you have uh, ASA software devices, so ASAs that have been out there for a while, you want to migrate them to threat defense. Um, you know, there's two ways to go. If you're doing the cloud management, you see here CDO, uh, it's included in CDO uh, that migration capability where I could point it to my existing ASA and it could directly send it to a new device or even make a template that I can apply to a device later uh, or to multiple devices if I wanted to. Very easy to use, automated solution. <clears throat> there is also a Firepower migration tool that works with the management center, uh, Firepower migration tool uh, that works with uh, the on-prem management center. Uh, and this actually runs on a desktop or a laptop, so you don't have to deploy like a big thing to use this. Uh, and it talks to your new firewall and the management center, very easy to use also. Uh, so those are available at no additional cost uh, to automate your deployment. So you chose a little Windows or Mac. Uh, so that's an end user based thing that talks to your uh, management center over here. All right, let's actually take a look at the solutions. It's a good time to pause to see if there's uh, any questions at the moment. Uh, please put them into the chat. We'd be happy to answer them. <clears throat> so far, all questions have been answered through the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure who they're sending the chat to. So that's, uh, you're sending the you're sending them to you? Yeah, it came directly to me. Okay, yeah. So that's fine. You can keep doing that. Uh, when Kevin's talking, probably send them to me or to uh, everyone, one of the two, uh, or all panelists, then all the panelists will get it. All right. So what I just did is I flipped over to one of my firewalls. So this is the device manager. Uh, notice they still call it Firepower Device Manager, so that's the previous name. Eventually they will update it that here, probably the next version. This is the latest shipping version. So if you haven't seen this before, it's extremely easy to use. Uh, I'm on the main page where I can go configure interfaces, routing, do updates locally to this firewall that I happen to be on. Gives me a nice preview of the port status right here. And if the networking flow was working out to the internet, very handy actually. I could actually collapse that too if I want to. If I want to configure an interface, I could come right on. It's all graphical and extremely fast. Everything pops up immediately. And I could manage it. There's an IP address on one of my firewalls. Um, or if I want to go back to the main screen. 
I can view my licenses. Uh, you know, these are the three main licenses for the product. And then there's also the VPN licensing, um, you know, to license if I could see if they're enabled and working, things like that. Um, updates uh, is easy to do locally, uh, but this is again right on the box. Cisco Defense Orchestrator is great for centralizing that. But here I could actually have it schedule updates for a geolocation database. It keeps a vulnerability database of known vulnerabilities, security intelligence feeds, and the intrusion prevention. I have all automatically updating. And then here is if I wanted to update the operating system itself, I downloaded the file manually and then uh, told it to uh, upgrade basically right here. Uh, so that's just a few things uh, on this screen. We're not going to look at everything. Uh, but I can also go look at policies uh, and very easy to create policies and see them working. Notice here I, I'm on access control. These are the main firewall rules, but I also could go look at network translation and, secure, and see my rules there or go to security intelligence and enable that. I could do SSL decryption. Um, that's that TLS de decryption. Uh, we commonly call it TLS these days now. Um, it could all be configured on this box, or if I wanted to customize intrusion prevention and pick which level and modify, that could be done. Uh, if I get a new rule real quick, just not to go too deep here, but you could quickly see it's, you know, you got different tabs. So this is traditional firewall rules right here, stores and destination. Or I could go look at applications. Uh, Kevin, why don't you have a view while you're typing there? Um, Sorry about that. Yeah, I could also, you know, right here, pick applications I want to block that it's getting from Open App ID. Uh, or I could go to advanced and really get sophisticated and say maybe I want to block uh, apps that are very low prevalence, uh, but they're very high risk. And it will sort of know. And those are probably ones I might want to block first. You know, did, I wouldn't block them all. I'd decide, you know, take my time and figure it out. But this really allows a, an organization of which applications you want to block. Uh, that's on applications. That's separate from URLs. So URLs is a different technology uh, looking at the actual uh, URLs themselves. So okay. So you can do your own uh, URL, or you could do it based on content, of course. And I could pre-create these in the objects area, same thing with applications, as opposed to doing it right here. And then just add the object as another option. Uh, intrusion prevention, you kind of just turn it on and select your level that you want to do. Uh, and then you can do your file policies, which for blocking malware or different types of files you want to block. All these different things could be done on the different firewall rules. Um, you also have a full assortment of objects you can configure locally uh, for doing different things. But again, it's quick and easy to get to. Everything's lightning fast when you're managing it, uh, which I do like. And then basic local monitoring of the box uh, happening, and different logistics, and you could centralize the events. So that's all locally. We do have uh, the Defense Orchestrator also, which allows me much easier to manage multiple firewalls. So this is the main screen I get to when I log into Defense Orchestrator. If I click here, I can then see all my firewalls that I have out there. Uh, so these are all mine, they're all real. Uh, and I'm managing you know, here. Uh, they recently added the ability to sort. So if I just wanted to see threat defense uh, firewalls, I could click here and then look at the ones I want to look at. You can see they're all synchronized. And fine. Maybe if I look at the one we were just on locally, that's this one, I can now see information about it over here. Uh, if I wanted to upgrade it, I'd click right here and see it's already running the latest version. It tells me that. Uh, but if I pick a different one, say number three here, uh, that's running seven rows, not the latest. So I could come here, hit upgrade, and select an image, and just hit continue, and it will automatically upgrade at my now or scheduled time. So upgrading can be quite handy. 
Uh, let me go back. But I can also manipulate all kinds of settings, VPN. You can figure it from here and do centralized policies in this product also. Um, so policies, if I wanted to do centralized ones, I, I could do them right on the box from here, from the cloud management. But I could even do rule sets where I want to do a policy that I'm going to redirect and push for multiple firewalls. So this particular policy pushed for two firewalls. It's called a rule set. There's lots of different centralization things you could do here. Uh, you could even do uh, those objects I was talking about. It will look at all the objects and all the firewalls and then tell me if I have issues. Like I have duplicate objects across firewalls uh, with different names or unused objects. This is a traditional problem in IT departments. People create objects and then eventually they stop using them, but then no one deletes them. They get over time, they get more and more and more of them. So, this is also an aid at figuring that out. Uh, there's also that centralized monitor that I was talking about earlier. Like, I could go to that centralized event logging and go look at, I went to look at logs, and I could, uh, this is looking at all those firewalls we just saw a moment ago, and I could look at the actual traffic going by. Um, you know, and I could filter it down to, you know, more specifically what I want to look at, or if I just want to look at a particular kind of thing. Um, you know, the other thing we have here is an executive summary that's centralized too. So this is uh, showing the traffic again across all five firewalls that are threat defense. And this is just a little, I don't have a lot of data going through these firewalls. I could also go look at web categories and things like that and threats. Uh, now it does tie into, again, with that optional license, the security analytics too. Uh, so this could be that add-on also to the firewall. This goes a big step farther and that's opening right now. And uh, this actually gives me all kinds of centralized information happening across all my firewalls. So this is very powerful actually. Uh, you know, I could go look at uh, top traffic observations from the system of all different kinds of traffic. It sends me alerts of people are doing things on the network. Very powerful solution. So recommend that as an add-on, actually. Um, now, let's just finish up the demo here. And real quick, I just wanted to show SecureX. Uh, and now that's a free add-on, so no cost to SecureX to add it to your firewalls. And it allows me to then uh, quickly get a single sign-in to various Cisco security products and get to the SecureX dashboard, which I have over here. So this is a centralized monitoring tool collecting data from multiple Cisco solutions and third party too. So I'm getting telemetry from uh, my firewall and actually my secure cloud analytics. Point their endpoint product sending me telemetry too. This is one part of SecureX. It's an overall platform that actually has multiple pieces. Uh, you know, there's a ribbon that ties in and connects all the different products with case books and incidents. So these are all optional features and no additional cost you could use of SecureX. Uh, there's also threat response, which is a threat hunting tool which pulls data from uh, across Cisco security products, all, from all of these products, and allows me to help us track down uh, different traffic. Um, yeah, apologize if uh, the audio got too bad there. Uh, I'm not sure if it's bad for everyone or not. Uh, try to keep that on track here. Um, so that's uh, it for the demonstration. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, nothing coming through in the chat so far yet, Tom. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back over to you then. Uh, here, I'll stop sharing and just pull the ball right over. Yeah, so hopefully it wasn't fading in and out the whole time. Uh, I apologize if it was for everyone. 
Uh, that's your email. Too. Okay. <laughs> Got rid of that. So uh, just uh, a few more uh, things to note uh, before we wrap up and uh, take any additional questions you may have. So I did mention uh, Talos. And what this is, and, and for once in our industry, we do not have an acronym here. TALUS actually doesn't stand for anything. It was the Greek god of protection. So that's why uh, Cisco named their, their threat research team after that. And the way they break down threat intelligence, global outreach, community, uh, vulnerability research and discovery, detection research, engineering and development. Not terribly important, but just know that they are the largest non-governmental threat research group uh, in the world. And any, any security vendor has a, a team like this. This is the secret sauce behind any uh, security vendor. And obviously Cisco is heavily invested in that. They have some fantastic uh, scientists amongst this group. And these are the people who are doing all the threat detection, research, patches, fixes, and pushing it down to all the Cisco uh, security solutions that are operating out there. And it, operates as a giant network as a sensor. So every uh, firewall, umbrella customer, uh, whatever it may be, any Cisco solution, they detect these threats, they block them, and then feed that telemetry info back to Cisco Tell saying, hey, this threat arrived, uh, we blocked it, or hey, this malicious, e this email turned out to be malicious, so let's block it. And uh, Telus then uh, reacts to that, develops and pushes down uh, that information uh, to instantly remediate uh, all other customers running uh, those products as well. So, again, this is the service uh, that is included with all Cisco products. This is not an additional feature or, or license or anything like that, but know that that is what's going on in the back end. And what this is what makes Cisco's security solutions uh, so effective. And you can just Google Cisco security third party reports. Um, and all kinds of those will come up comparing multiple vendors and showing how, just how high Cisco ranks uh, on those charts. And just wanted to touch real quick a bit more on the uh, common uh, use cases, requirements, and the feature sets that are typically needed in each of these use cases. So under Internet Edge, uh, typically we're seeing providing high availability and redundancy, uh, dynamic routing and address translation capabilities, and often integrating with uh, network access control, either with Cisco's or, or with other. And under data center, our solutions provide high availability, scalability, um, high needs for high bandwidth, as well as the latency, uh, denial of service, uh, attack capabilities, next generation IPS. And under branch, often uh, we're providing features such as site-to-site -site, uh, VPN, Again, high availability, routing, application visibility and control, uh, incident response, and also dual WAN uh, capabilities. Under our cloud and virtual uh, use case, high availability, um, operating at the Internet Edge or VPN gateway, uh, backhaul to an SDN, as well as uh, inbound inspection. And under the dedicated uh, IPS, feature set. So this would be for a separation of duties. So this would be a dedicated next generation uh, IPS capable appliance providing superior threat efficacy. Uh, certainly does tie back into uh, Cisco TALUS threat intelligence, TLS decryption. And this, there certainly is a need that we can provide this of mirroring traffic and deploy in active inline or passive mode. Of course, network reliability and scalability. And for the needs of remote access and VPN, of course, we, we want to be able to connect Cisco's and connect VPN clients, but also can uh, provide connectivity to third party VPN clients as well. Uh, integrate with endpoint security and, of course, authentication, authorization, and accountability. And the last thing I just wanted to mention um, if you happen to be interested in the space of the uh, small business uh, box. Uh, there is a bundle uh, to assist with uh, simplification um, as well as a full feature set and, and easy for pricing, that type of thing. It comes with the Firepower uh, 1010, and this actually includes all of the options for uh, threat licensing. So full feature set of application visibility and control, uh, secure malware, next generation IPS, and the URL uh, filtering feature set. And this box is designed to be a, a desktop size. It is fanless, so it doesn't have to be an air-conditioned room. It does have switch ports, some of which are PoE. 
it's capable of doing and note uh, this is something we would have to discuss uh, up to 650 megabits of throughput and depending on how much you turn on that number will go down and also um, it does include uh, management options for Cisco defense orchestrator as well as the on box management uh, it can also do uh, cloud log cloud cloud logging or sale uh, with seven day retention and if there is a requirement uh, in your environment to have that turned off and deleted that can be done and also this will include uh, 50 licenses for any connect VPN clients and we will be sharing this uh, with you so I also included uh, just some additional uh, resources if you want to uh, be aware of those and look into them so YouTube channel github that Matt and FID portal and of course uh, the main homepage for that and with that uh, that does end uh, our primary presentation uh, content